Good evening and welcome to RTM News. My name is Vicky Lee White and I'll be bringing you your top stories tonight. In South African news, skills pilot was respected. Willem Bias Marais, who died in a helicopter crash yesterday while battling a fire at Cape Point, was a respected pilot, the SA National Park said. I quote Bias as he was affectionately known by his friends and family alike, played a vital role in suppressing the fire that has burned across the Table Mountain National Park during the course of the week. Sand Park's board chairperson Kuseni Dlamini said in a statement yesterday, Marais' helicopter crashed while fighting a blaze at the Cape Point Nature Reserve. Environmental Affairs Minister Edna Molewa sent condolences to pilot Willem Bias Marais' family following his death. At least 500 people had been evacuated since the fire began in Mazenberg. In the next story, 22 help for speeding. 22 motorists were arrested for speeding in Johannesburg, Metro Police said yesterday. I quote, they were arrested along the Golden Highway in Lanasia, in Newlands and along the N1 near Krasmir Tor Plaza over the weekend, said spokesperson Chief Superintendent Wayne Minar. One of the motorists traveling in a Mercedes Benz was also charged with drunk driving. I quote, he became aggressive after officers stopped him for clocking 182 kilometers per hour on a 120 kilometer zone. Officers discovered that he was driving under the influence of alcohol. And now the motorist threatened an officer by showing him a loaded gun after he was stopped for speeding in Lanasia, Minar said. The officer wrestled the motorist to the ground and handcuffed him. On the way to the police station, he tried to bribe the officer with a 100 rand note. The 23-year-old driver was charged with speeding, threatening an officer with a firearm and corruption. In the next story, teenager dies in KZN minibus accident. A 15-year-old girl died and 15 people were injured when a minibus went off the R102 at Melville and crashed into bushes, KwaZulu Natal Emergency Medical Services said yesterday. I quote, the vehicle had overturned in the process. Sadly, the crash has left a 15-year-old girl fatally injured, spokesperson Robert McKenzie said in a statement. Paramedics worked together and stabilized a further 15 patients who had been injured in the crash. Several of the patients were trapped in the wreck and had to be extricated. The patients, once freed and stabilized, were transported to Port Shepston and Murchison hospitals for further treatment. The cause of the accident was unknown. Police were investigating. In the final South African story, 9 million rand claim against Pippi Surgeon. A 9 million rand legal claim has been made against plastic surgeon Dr. Ridwan Mia and the Netcare Group for alleged unethical conduct, the City Press reported. The newspaper reported that lawyers for the parents of a young burn victim, Seliwe Maseko, had sent a letter of demand on Friday. The letter is apparently based on trauma, pain and risk their daughter suffered during a four-month stay in Garden City Clinic in Johannesburg while she waited for cloned skin from the USA. Her body rejected the transplant and normal skin graft was later successfully conducted. Mia rose to fame in 2012 when he performed pioneering surgery with cloned skin on toddler Pippi Kruger who had sustained third degree burns when fire lighter gel apparently exploded in her father's hands during New Year's Eve the previous year. However, Masoko's parents have alleged that in terms of the treatment that their daughter subsequently received, they were not properly informed about the processes involved. Mia told the Sunday Times that he had done nothing wrong and Maseko had received the best possible treatment. He was ready to oppose the matter in court. Meanwhile, Jacques Duplessis, managing director of Nedke's hospital division, says the hospital could not be held liable. That's it for South African News. Stay with us. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to RTM News. Let's have a look at the rest of the African stories. In the first story, Mali bar attacks kill five in Bamako. Five people have been killed in a machine gun and grenade attack on a bar in Mali's capital, Bamako. A masked gunman opened fire at La Terrace bar, killing a French national, witnesses said. A Belgian security official working for the EU and three Malayans also died in the attack. One witness said an attacker shouted, God is great in Arabic. It is the first attack of its kind in the capital. It's not clear who carried out the attack, but Al-Qaeda-linked Islamist militants have been fighting the army in northern Mali for a number of years. France, the former colonial power in Mali, intervened two years ago to stop the advance south on Bamako. In the next story, South Sudan mediators attack. South Sudan mediators attack unacceptable talks failure. Mediators in peace talks between South Sudan's government and rebels have said both sides' failure to reach a deal is morally and politically unacceptable. Ethiopian Prime Minister Haile Mariam Dasalegin, the chair of a regional body overseeing the talks, said South Sudan's leaders had failed its people. Their inaction, he said, would prolong suffering and a senseless war. The 14-month conflict in South Sudan has displaced more than a million people and killed tens of thousands. The government led by President Salva Kiir and the rebels led by Rick Machar missed Thursday's deadline for reaching a deal in talks in Ethiopia, overseen by the East African regional body IGAD. Further talks on Friday also ended without agreement. And now in Nigerian news, dozens killed in multiple suicide attacks in northern Nigerian city. Dozens of Nigerian civilians were killed Saturday in multiple suicide bombings in Maiduguri, the birthplace of the violent Islamist militant group Boko Haram, officials said. Underscoring the difficulty of ensuring security for Nigerian national elections due to take place within weeks, suicide bombers attacked markets and a bus station in the city, killing more than 50 people, many of them women and children. The bomber detonated four blasts in Maiduguri and a fifth car bomb at a military checkpoint outside the city. Police Commissioner Clement Adoda said at least 58 people were killed in the blast over several hours. More than 150 people were injured, news agencies reported. Although no group claimed responsibility, the bombings in Boko Haram's heartland bore the hallmarks of previous violence by the extremist group, which has a history of attacking so soft civilian targets, including markets, transport hubs, bars and churches. Nigerian kidnappers demand ransom for U.S. missionary Phyllis Soto. Kidnappers who abducted Seattle missionary Phyllis Sorte this week have demanded a $150,000 ransom, according to Nigerian police, suggesting the kidnapping was probably carried out by a criminal gang rather than militants. Police and security forces were combing the region in search of Sorte. Locals in Kohi state where Sorte was abducted have been complaining about the high rate of crime and kidnappings for ransom in the region. The general concept here is that Americans have money, so they thought that by kidnapping her, they can get money. Police Commissioner Adeyemi Ogun Jemelusi in Nigeria, state of Gogi. The ransom demand suggests that the militant group Boko Haram, which operates farther north in Nigeria and is in retreat after attacks from regional military forces, isn't involved in the crime. Boko Haram has kidnapped hundreds of Nigerian women and has abducted foreigners, but doesn't normally demand immediate ransoms. The kidnaps phoned Mateus Emenike, an official of Sorta's free Methodist Missionary Church on Tuesday to demand a $300,000 ransom but called back a day later to halve the demand. Nigerian media reported citing police. That's it for the African news tonight. Stay with us and we'll be right back. 
Open Heavens, A Guide to a Close Fellowship with God, Volume 15 for Adults and Volume 8 for Teenagers, 2015, written by Pastor E.A. Adeboye, is available. Open Heavens is a motivating and inspirational Christian daily guidebook to teach the ways of God. You can get a copy of the Open Heavens at Redemption Camp, Kilometer 46, Lagos, Ebedan Expressway, Moway, Ogun State, Nigeria, and every parish of the Redeemed Christian Church of God. You can also grab yours at the regional headquarters, the Master's Place, 4 Commercial Avenue, Stratum Park, Randburg, Johannesburg. Telephone numbers plus 277-1179-14141. And our Zambia Regional Headquarters, Regional Secretariat Plot, 8665 Kamloops Road, next to the Evangelical Fellowship, Lusaka, Zambia. Telephone number plus 2609-7741-0426. Or you can also get a copy at any of our regional headquarters of the Redeemed Christian Church of God worldwide. For more information, visit our website www.rccg.org and www.eaadeboye.com. When you read, you skim the surface. When you study, you discover the treasure. God bless you. Welcome back to our team news. Let's have a look at the international stories. In international news, six suspects in Boris Nemtsov's killing dies in suicide, report says. A sixth suspect in the shooting death of a top Russian opposition figure blew himself up after a standoff with police in the capital of Shechen Republic, state-run television reported yesterday. Bezlin Shavanov, 30, was holed up in a building in Grozny when police, arrested, when police arrived to arrest him Saturday afternoon, Russia 24 reported. Police surrounded the building and Shavano tried to escape, throwing a grenade at police officers before blowing himself up, the station said. The news came as Russian authorities reported making five other arrests in connection with Boris Nemtsov's killing. One of those arrested claimed to have an alibi, according to Russia's Sputnik News. I quote, at the time of the murder, I was at work as I usually am every day. There are many people, my colleagues, who will confirm this. The news agency quoted Tamerlan Asikonov as saying in Moscow's Basmani District Court. Two of the suspects have been formally charged and three remain under the status of suspects, court spokesperson Anna Fadeyeva told Sputnik. Nemtsov, one of President Vladimir Putin's most outspoken critics, was shot in the back on a Moscow bridge as he walked with his girlfriend near the Kremlin in late February. Surveillance videos showed someone darting from the sidewalk and into a nearby car right after Nemtsov collapsed. In the next story, arrests after Indian mob raids jail kills rape suspect. Police in India's farthest northeastern state of Nagaland have arrested 22 people in connection with the killing of a jail inmate accused of rape. More arrests are also expected in the next two days, says G. Aketo Sema, an additional director general of Nagaland's police. The detainees, all local to the state, are alleged to be among a crowd of thousands of people who stormed a jail in the Dimapur district and dragged out the suspected rapist before beating him to death in the street. The 35-year-old victim had been accused of raping a local woman last month. I quote, there were thousands of them, many of them were students in uniform, said Al Al Dungal, the police chief of Nagaland, where the attack occurred Thursday evening. The dead man was initially identified as an undocumented Bangladeshi settler, but now police say they still are determining his nationality. I quote, I'm not ruling out that he's not a Bangladeshi, I'm not denying that he's not an Indian. We are verifying his nationality, Sema remarked when asked about local reports suggesting the attacked man was an Indian citizen. Dimapur town remains under a curfew, Sema said, amid growing tensions between native Nagas and Bangladeshi migrants in the district. Missing boy, 13 found dead in Pennsylvania. An 8th grade student missing since Wednesday has been found dead, according to authorities in Pennsylvania. The body of Cayman Nabe, 13, was found around 1.30 p.m. yesterday. William A. Murray III of the Newtown Township Police Department told CNN in an email. 
Mark G. Hopkins, chief of Greater Philadelphia Search and Rescue, said the boy's body was found about 150 yards from his home in an area that was slippery and very treacherous. Hopkins told CNN there were no obvious signs of trauma to the body. A canine union located the body, which was under snow in a sleeping position, Hopkins said. A search for the boy has drawn hundreds of volunteers on foot and online. In the final story, U.S. tourists arrested for carving initials into wall at Rome's Colosseum. Two American women have reportedly been arrested for carving their initials into a wall with a coin inside Rome's Colosseum. Daily Italian newspaper La Stampa says the woman, aged 21 and 25, was spotted carrying out the act by fellow tourists, who then told security. The two letters J and N were about eight inches in length and stretched and scratched on a brick wall at the historic Roman amphitheater. The women, both from California, reportedly snapped a selfie with their initials before they were arrested. Their names have not been released. The American pair may now face a fine for aggravated damage on a building of historical and artistic interest. If one Russian's experience is anything to go by, the price won't be cheap. Last November, authorities in Rome slapped a 20,000 euro penalty on a Russian tourist caught carving his name in the Colosseum. That's all the news that I have for you tonight. Stay with us as we're crossing over to Adelani for the sports. Are you celebrating a birthday, a wedding, office party, anniversary or feel like having a taste of the best cake ever? Then Cakes at Eddie is the place to go. We specialize in all kinds of cakes, such as novelty cakes, character cakes, and many more. Just think of something and we'll make it for you. Our telephone numbers are 061 446 1812 or call us at 082 or you can email us on at cakeseddy at gmail.com or you can also visit our website at www.eddiescakes.co.za. Cakes at Eddie, where elegance and taste meet. Good evening and a warm welcome to everybody. You're currently watching RTM Sports News with me, Adela Neogurende. These are the top stories in the world of sport from the weekend. In African football news, Flying Eagles begin 2015 African Youth Championship campaign with a win. In more African football news, we give you a roundup of all the PSL action played over the weekend as Kaiser Chiefs and Orlando Pirates play to a goalless draw. In international football news, Blackburn take Liverpool to replay in the FA Cup and Aston Villa book place in Wembley. In Cricket World Cup 2015 news, Australia overcome Sri Lanka in Sydney and New Zealand beat Afghanistan. In tennis news, Davis Cup 2015, Belgium knockout holders Switzerland and Andy Murray wins to wrap up GB victory over USA. In athletics news, Britain's Richard Kilty wins 60 meter gold. Starting with the news making all the headlines in Nigerian football. The Flying Eagles began their 2015 African Youth Championship campaign on a bright note. Nigeria under-20 team defeated hosts Senegal's under-20 3-1 in the opening match of the 2015 African Youth Championship played in Dakar on Sunday. A brace from Taiwo Awoni in the opening 11 minutes of the encounter inspired Manu Garba's side to victory over Ifanyi Matthew getting the third for the Nigerians with Sidi Sa pulling a goal for the hosts. In more African football news in the PSL games played over the weekend. The much anticipated Soweto Derby between Kaiser Chiefs and Orlando Pirates ended in a goalless draw in an APSA Premiership encounter at the FMB Stadium on Saturday afternoon. Amakosi continued to be on top of the league log with 51 points from 22 matches. In another PSL encounter, goals from Zimbabwe internationals 
Cuthbert Malijila and Kama Biliat gave Mamelodi Sundowns a 2 0 APSA Premiership win over Free State Stars at their home fortress, the Charles Mopeli Stadium, on Saturday night. Bitfest Vits was in action on Friday night, and their slim APSA Premiership title hopes were dealt a big blow when they were beaten 1 0 in Johannesburg by Bloemfontein Celtic. Elsewhere, University of Pretoria grinded out a 1 0 win over Maritzburg United in the Tuck Stadium on Sunday. An early goal for Atusaye in Yondo saw Amatox to victory, though the hosts had to play over an hour of the match with 10 men following the expulsion of Vuyisile Untombayite. The result sees the Tuane side extend their unbeaten league run to eight matches. Elsewhere, Platinum Stars broke a seven-game winless streak in the APSA Premiership when they defeated Morocco Swallows 1-0 at the Royal Bafokeng Stadium on Sunday afternoon. A first-half own goal from the Birds' Rudy Isaacs decided the match with Dequena claiming a first win in the league since early December to leapfrog the Soweto side into 14th place on 21 points. For Swallows, it was a fourth successive defeat dealt to them in 2015. They dropped to 15th on 18 points, just five ahead of basement club Amazulu. Moving on, two late goals in the second half by Tande Yise Kuboni and Bongi Untuli saw Amazulu and Umpumulanga Black Aces earn a point each in a 1-1 draw at the Umbombela Stadium on Saturday night in their APSA Premiership encounter. Going now to international football in England, Blackburn Rovers earned a deserved draw with Liverpool at Anfield as the championship side forced an FA Cup quarter-final replay. Liverpool had 21 shots but only four were on target, while Blackburn had only one shot on target. RTM Sport can confirm that Martin Skirtle should be fit for Liverpool's Premier League match at Swansea on the 16th of March, despite fears he had lost consciousness in that match. In another FA Cup clash, Bradford and Reading must meet again for a place in the FA Cup semi-finals after playing out a tense and scrappy goalless draw at the Valley Parade. Elsewhere, Aston Villa sealed a place in the FA Cup semi-final and a first trip to Wembley in five years with a second victory inside a week over fierce West Midlands rivals West Brom. Goals by Delft and Sinclair gave Villa a 2-1 win. In Spain, Spanish league leaders Real Madrid lost 1-0 at Athletic Bilbao on Saturday, stumbling for a second straight week. Aritz Aduriz rose to head in the only goal in the 26th minute. Elsewhere, Lionel Messi scored the 24th hat-trick of his La Liga career as a rampant Barcelona went to the top of the table, winning 6-1. Barcelona took full advantage of Real Madrid's defeat as they smashed Rayo Vallecano. In another result, Atletico Madrid drew 1-1 with Valencia. In Germany, Thomas Müller scored twice as Bayern Munich came from a goal down to beat Hanover 3-1 on Saturday and stretch the advantage at the top of the Bundesliga to 11 points after Wolfsburg slumped to a 1-0 defeat at Augsburg. There were also wins for Schalke and Werder Bremen. Moving on to cricket. Glenn Maxwell hit the second fastest century in World Cup history as Australia beat Sri Lanka. by 64 runs to advance to the quarter-finals. In another match played over the weekend, New Zealand made it five wins from five at the World Cup as a six-wicket win in Napier eliminated Afghanistan from quarter-final contention. In tennis news, Andy Murray sealed a Davis Cup quarter-final place for Great Britain with a straight sets win over American Joss Isner in Glasgow. 
He saved three set points in the first set and won 7-6, 6-3, 7-6 to give Britain an unassailable 3-1 lead in the World Group first round tie. Britain will next play France at home in July with the venue to be decided. In another tennis match played over the weekend, Belgium's David Goffin recovered from a back injury to secure a 3-2 victory over Davis Cup champions Switzerland. And lastly, Britain's Richard Kilty won 60 metres gold at the European Indoor Championships in Prague to add to his world 60-metre title. Kilty clocked a season's best 6.51 seconds in a race where his main rival and teammate Chichundi Uja was disqualified for a false start. So that wraps up all the sports news I have for you all today. Before I go, let me give you a quick recap of the top stories this evening. In African football news, Flying Eagles begin 2015 African Youth Championships campaign with a win. In more African football news, RTM Sports gave you a roundup of all the PSL action played over the weekend as Kaiser Chiefs and Orlando Pirates play to a goalless draw. In international football news, Blackburn take Liverpool to replay in the FA Cup and Aston Villa book place in Wembley. In Cricket World Cup 2015 news, Australia overcome Sri Lanka in Sydney and New Zealand beat Afghanistan. In tennis news, Davis Cup 2015, Belgium knockout holders, Switzerland and Andy Murray wins to wrap up Great Britain's victory over the United States. In athletics news, Britain's Richard Kilty wins 60 meters gold. Now let me give you your sports guide for today. In cricket news, ICC World Cup, England versus Bangladesh, that match is on the way. Um, and we also have soccer, African under 20s, Ghana versus South Africa, the match should be on the way. And also Mali versus Zambia. And the big one, the FA Cup quarterfinals um, up for grabs. Um, it will be Manchester United versus Arsenal at 9.30 p.m. And in Serie A, it is Lazio versus Fiorentina and also Juventus versus Sassuolo. So look out for all those amazing mouth-watering encounters that will be taking place this evening on your screens. So that wraps up all the reports I have for you in the world of sport. It's a good night from me at Delaneo Grandi. Till next time, let's cross over back to Vicky Lee for now. Thank you very much Adelani for that sports update and now let's go over to the weather. From all of us here at our team news from me, Vicky Lee White. Enjoy the rest of your evening and we'll see you again tomorrow.